Welcome back to another episode of FRC Robotics 101. Today we are here to bring you some bits of knowledge about the manufacturing process. This is going to be the direct result of the first CAD and prototyping, so if you haven't seen those before, it might be helpful for you to look through those first before coming back to this episode. So as for this episode, we will go in depth about the options you have when it comes to manufacturing any parts. So a quick overview, the options you have for manufacturing are basically one of these three, CNC, manual, and 3D printing, each with vastly different speed, usage, and price point. To elaborate on this, we will see how each kind of these is different to one another, and then we'll see the different categories into each one. So first, let's start off with the manual, the old school classic way that has been done for thousands of years. This is probably the fastest and cheapest option of all. If you want to make a part, just put it on a vise, cut it up into pieces, drill some holes inside. It's as simple as that. But now what you have is a piece of unshapely aluminum with disorderly lines and holes. Not so good, right? The thing is, manual work is fine, but it will never be as accurate and robust as what you can do with a machine. This kind of production is only ever acceptable with the lathes and mills that have computer display or if you're making an inconsequential part, supporting part. Many tools like the drills and the angle grinders are very useful for just truck for such projects but never look to them if you need to cut through a piece of solid aluminum or pinpoint precision. It's best left to do things like modifying parts, pocketing, and prototyping. This kind of machine creates a huge change in production standard in the 1950s since the precision is very high and not dependent on the shape of the product. On the other hand, human can are only capable of drawing some particular shapes, like we are kind of good at drawing straight lines and right angles, but when it comes to more complicated shapes, it's best to let the machine do the thing. So now you can see how great the machine are, right? But however, they are much more expensive than the other alternatives. So if you don't have the financial ability to afford one of these things, I suggest you find some universities or in institutes that will be willing to let you use the machinery. Now let's go to the last one. The last one is the 3D printers. These are actually CNC machines as it fits the description, but I really want to separate it since it's a form of additive manufacturing. This kind of manufacturing is where you build an object by putting materials on layer by layer until you get the finished product. So I just showed you three options you have for manufacturing. The reasons I talk about the different options is that each option has its own strengths and limitations. So only by understanding these can you make the best use out of the tools you have. So we just go through the basics of free manufacturing methods. Now we go deeper into each one. First, let's go back to the manual. So as for the manual tools and machineries, I won't talk much about the hand tools since there are a myriad of them, as you can see, and most of them are very straightforward. Instead, I'll be talking about the mill and the lathe. These are enough for you to make a functional robot. First, the mill. The mill is great for drilling accurately for parts, cutting sheet metals and wood, making grooves. It's just generally great for creating many parts of the robot. Yet, there are some limitations to this machine. It is terrible at doing anything that is not along one of its XYZ axis. So any curve or angle hole is basically impossible. Furthermore, the accuracy of this machine is highly dependent on the tool bit you're using. Another common machine is the lathe. The lathe is extraordinary at cutting cylindrical things and axles. You can make and cut axles with exceptional accuracy, but that is really the only thing you can do with it. So as for the CNC machines, the things you will most likely have available, available to you are the router, the wire cutter, the laser cutter, and the water jet, four of them. 
first, let's talk about the router. The router is basically the mill, but this time you don't control it. But instead, there's a computer that can move the tool bit along multiple axes with great accuracy controlling it. This clears up the problem of no curve and makes it one of the most common ways to manufacture. However, the problem of maximum accuracy being dependent on the drill bit is still present. This is going to be one of the main ways you make your parts from the sheet metals and materials. Now, let's go to the other three. The wire cutter, the laser cutter, and the water jet. So these are as accurate as you can get for this kind of machine, but they are incredibly slow. What you can get done in an hour with a router might even take you up to half a day in one of these. Furthermore, each one of these, except the water jet, has additional problems. The wire cutter cannot by any means not cut through the whole thing. So if you want to remove part of something, it has to be approachable from the side and the cut has to be all the way through. The laser cutter, while capable of not cut through the whole thing, is unable to cut very deep since the laser gets dispersed extremely quickly. Instead of having any limitation, however, the water jet has something good going for it. It is one of the only ways to cut into heat sensitive materials as the water cools down the material that is heated in the process. Finally, we have the 3D printers, the biggest time sponge of all. So 3D printers are phenomenal for us making small parts because of its high accuracy. The reason it can do such things is because it builds from ground up enabling it to create little details with intricate angles and such. But the limitation also lies in a small size of it. Most 3D printers are tabletop and they can make anything too big because of the size of the machine and the fact that printing things takes so long. For real, it can take up to an hour for something as small as a die to be made in a 3D printer. However, one good thing about a 3D printer is that they can be upgraded easily and the floor price is very is small and so you're more likely to afford one of these. Though its filaments are not readily as aluminum or wood and it requires some effort to keep them. So in conclusion, there are three manufacturing methods that you need to remember. Manual, CNC and 3D printer. Manual is the easiest, cheapest and the fastest way and it's good for making parts that are don't that don't require high accuracy and the errors don't matter. CNC is the most expensive way but it also delivers the best quality. This method is highly recommended if you need to make parts that are solid, dense and require high accuracy. Finally, the 3D printer is just great for making small accurate parts if you have good enough filaments. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.